technically speaking, te te technically, technically, technically speaking. I ain't talking vegan when I said that I've been eating, making money on the side, but I use it for the main. I'm speaking in code when I tech talk that financial freedom. Have a seat, cause you gon' wanna sit up at my table. Get plugged in that it, girl. I see with the cables, yeah. Network engineering is for you, it ain't no labels, yeah. Shaky with my passion, took a leap, it got me stable, yeah. Now I make a hundred K or better, paper couldn't fit a stapler. And I spend it on my passion, cause I'm capable. Technically speaking, now I'm really talking vegan when I said that I've been eating, I've been technically speaking. Welcome to Technically Speaking, where we help you increase your income through tech. Today, we're going to be talking about the OSI model, and this is a key element of the CompTIA Network Plus certification. So this will be an exam prep topic, and it'll bring you one step closer to passing with confidence and unlocking new opportunities in the tech world. For more resources to help you succeed, check the description for the links to our exam prep notes, study guides, and personalized consultation services. If this video helps you, don't forget to like and subscribe for more ways to boost your tech skills and income. Let's get started. Before we get into it, um, I just want to have a quick introduction here. For you guys that do not know, my name is Jessica. I'm the founder of Technically Speaking. You can call me Jess. And I specialize in helping individuals and businesses increase their income through tech. My mission for this lesson is to simplify tech concepts and empower you to succeed in your career by obtaining industry certification. The goal of this exam topic is for you to competently explain the OSI model as well as data encapsulation. This will not only help you with passing the exam, but also aid in your interviewing and troubleshooting skills. Let's get into it. The OSI model, Open Systems Interconnection is like a blueprint that helps us understand how computers and devices talk to each other over a network. It breaks the process down into seven simple layers, each with a different job. By splitting everything into layers, you can see exactly how computers connect and share information. It's a common language that developers and engineers follow so all kinds of computers and devices can work together, even if they were built by different companies. Each layer of the OSI model has specific rules that tell devices how to handle data. By following these rules, different devices can talk to each other smoothly, no matter how they are made or what software they're using. It helps to keep things organized and flexible. So if something changes in one layer, it doesn't mess up the whole process. In short, the OSI model helps computers, phones, and other devices communicate in a clear and structured way, making sure everything works together, even across different systems. Now let's go in. Let's talk about OSI layer one, the physical layer. This layer is all about the actual hardware that sends data. Think about things like cables, fiber optics, or even radio signals. It's the physical connection between devices. The data being sent here is just raw ones and zeros, bits. It doesn't care about the meaning of the data. It just moves it from one place to another. Example of layer one includes ethernet cables that plug into your computer or the radio signals your phone uses to connect to Wi-Fi. This layer is essential for providing physical pathway for data to travel. Without it, no communication can happen between devices. The OSI layer two, the data link. Layer two focuses on direct communication between two devices called nodes on the same network. It ensures that data gets from one device to another within a local network. Data at this layer is packaged into frames, which include the device's unique MAC address, like a device's ID on the network, basically. This layer also handles error detection, making sure data arrives correctly. Common technologies working at layer two include ethernet and Wi-Fi. Both of these use MAC addresses to ensure data is delivered to the right place. 
So layer two is crucial because it makes sure data gets to the correct device on the same network, while also checking for any errors during the transmission. Without it, devices couldn't identify each other. OSI layer three, the network layer. Layer three is all about finding the most efficient route for data to travel, especially when moving between different networks. It ensures that data gets from the source to the de uh, destination, even across long distance. Here, IP addresses come into play, acting like a device's postal address. They identify both the source and destination, making sure data is sent to the right location, even if the devices aren't on the same local network. Routers are the key devices at this layer. They help data, they help data find its way by directing it to the correct network or destination based on IP addresses. The most common protocol at this layer is the IP internet protocol. This is the backbone of how data is routed across the internet. Layer three makes sure that data finds its way from one network to another, ensuring communication across the internet or scale yeah. networks. Without it, data would get lost between networks. OSI layer four, the transport layer. Layer four ensures reliable communication between the source and destination, managing the complete journey of the data from one device to another. It keeps track of the connection to make sure data is delivered correctly. At this layer, data is broken into smaller pieces, segments, before being sent and then reassembled at the destination. Two major protocols work at layer four. TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, which is a reliable method that ensures all data arrives and in the right order using something like acknowledgments, and UDP, which is User Datagram Protocol. This is an unreliable protocol, but it's a faster method, but it just doesn't guarantee delivery or the order. It's often used for real-time services like video streams. Layer four is responsible for making sure data gets from one end to another, and it decides whether speed, UDP, or reliability, TCP, is more important for the type of communication. OSI layer five, the session layer. Layer five is responsible for setting up and managing communication sessions between two devices or applications. It's like making sure a phone call between two people happens smoothly without interruptions. This layer handles the entire process of creating and managing a connection. It establishes the session, keeps it active as long as it's needed, and then terminates it when the communication is done. Remote desktop connections is basically where one computer controls another, and SQL sessions, which are database queries, they rely on layer five to manage their ongoing communication. Layer five ensures that communication sessions between applications are properly established, maintained, and closed. It keeps track of who's connected to whom and ensures the conversation flows smoothly until it's finished. OSI layer six, the presentation. Layer six is like the translator of the OSI. It makes sure the data is in a format that both the senders and the receiver's applications can understand. It handles any necessary conversions between different data formats. This layer also takes care of encrypting data to keep it secure, compressing it to make it smaller for faster transmission and formatting it so it can be understood by the application at the other end. Examples of layer six functions include JPEG, converting an image into a compressed format, uh, MP3, 
compressing audio data for transmission, and even SSL, TLS, which is encrypting data for secure communication, like when you're browsing securely online. Layer six ensures that data is properly formatted, compressed, or encrypted so that the application layer can process it effectively and securely. Without this layer, applications would struggle to understand or use the data being transmitted. OSI layer seven, the application layer. Layer seven is the application layer, and it's the one that's the closest to you, the user. This is where the applications you use, like web browsers, email clients, or file sharing apps, interact with the network. This layer handles high-level protocols that allow different applications to work over the network. HTTP, the protocol used for browsing the web. FTP, used for transferring files between computers. Or SMTP, which handles sending and receiving email messages. Just a name an example. Layer seven manages all the high level protocols that different applications use to communicate. It ensures that the data from the user's application is properly prepared for the lower levels of the OSI model to handle. Layer seven is all about enabling the applications you interact with, like your web browser or email, to communicate over a network. It ensures the protocols that power these apps are working correctly, making it possible for you to browse the web, send emails, and more. This is a complete diagram um, of the OSI model. And what I like about this diagram is it shows visual representation of each layer. So this, uh, diagram. You can pause it here to read through some more, or if you are um, have the exam prep notes, you can just reference it in the PDF. I think this is a good one to just have in your arsenal because it really gives you a nice cheat sheet of the protocols at each level. Now, let's finish on and talk about data encapsulation and decapsulation. Now, what is it? Encapsulation is the process of wrapping data with headers and sometimes trailers and it passes down each layer of the OSI model. Each layer adds its own specific information that helps the data move across the network. For example, layer four adds a TCP or UDP header. Layer three adds an IP header. Layer two adds a MAC address header and sometimes a trailer for error check. These headers provide important details like source, destination addresses, protocols, and error checking to ensure successful transmission. When data reaches the receiving end, the process is reversed. This is called decapsulation. As data moves up the OSI layers, the headers are moved, excuse me, the headers are removed one by one until the original data reaches the application. So the email or the website, whatever you originally wanted to see or you know have displayed. Encapsulation ensures that data have all the necessary information to travel across the network successfully, while data decapsulation extracts the data when it arrives at its destination. Without this process, data couldn't be transmitted or understood correctly across the networks. Ethernet header. The Ethernet header is part of layer two, and its main job is to carry the source and destination MAC addresses. These unique addresses identify the devices communicating on the same local network, like your computer, and a route. The ethernet header also includes a frame check uh, sequence, FCS. This is a mechanism used to detect errors in the data. It basically ensures the data that has enough 
it basically ensures that the data hasn't been corrupted during transmission. The ethernet header is essential for identifying devices within a local network using MAC addresses and ensuring the data is accurate with the FCS. IP header. The IP header includes the source IP address where the data is coming from and the destination IP address where the data is going. This is like the to and from addresses on a letter, ensuring that the data packet reaches the correct location across different networks. TTL, or time to live, is a value that prevents data from endlessly circulating the network if it cannot find its destination. Each time the packet passes through a router, the TTL decreases until it reaches zero, at which point the packet is discarded. The checksum is a validation field that checks for any errors in the IP header during transmission. This is to ensure that the packet is not corrupted. The main job of the IP header is to guide the packet from the source to the correct destination, making sure it gets routed through different networks until it arrives where it's supposed to. Okay, so the critical role here that the IP header is playing is making sure that the data is getting from one network to another network using IP addresses and error-free routes. Okay, so without this, devices across different networks wouldn't know where to send or receive data. TCP UDP headers. Now, the TCP header is more complex because it ensures reliable data transmission. It includes sequence numbers, acknowledgements, and flags. Now, UDP header is more simpler compared to TCP because it does not guarantee delivery or order of the packets. It only includes the source and destination ports. Now UDP is used in situations where speed is more important than reliability, like in stream or game. Now, both TCP and UDP operate at the layer four. So this is managing the transport of data between devices. It's just TCP is focused on reliability, while UDP prioritizes uh, speed. Both are essential for different types of network applications. Payload and MTU. The payload is the main part of the package. It is the actual data that's being sent over the network. This could be anything from the web page, video stream, or a file you're downloading. The maximum transmission unit, MTU, is the largest amount of data in bytes that you can um, that can be transmitted in a single packet over the network. So MTU sizes depend on the type of network. So the Ethernet standard MTU is 1,500 bytes. Now, if the payload is larger than the MTU, fragmentation occurs, meaning the data is broken into smaller pieces. Each fragment is assembled at the destination. Fragmentation can slow down the transmission and may cause issues if fragments are lost or delayed. The payload the important data being sent, while the MTU determines how much of that data can be sent at once. That brings us to the end of our lesson on the OSI model and data encapsulation. I hope this breakdown of each layer and the key concepts has helped you better understand how network communication works from the physical transmission of data all the way up to the application level all the way up to the application level protocols. As a quick recap, we explored the seven layers of the OSI model, from the physical layer up to the application layer. We discussed data encapsulation and how headers and trailers are added to data as it moves 
down the layers. We also covered key concepts like Ethernet header, IP header, TCP, UDP headers, and the importance of MTU and HALO. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more in-depth tutorials on networking, certifications, and tech skills. I'll be posting more content to help you master your certifications and boost your income through tech. If you have any questions or need further clarification, drop them in the comments below, and I'll be happy to help. Also, check out the description for links to more resources and my other tech education content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.